The gentleman from Virginia Beach. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen of the House, uh, as with many of you, I woke up this mor morning facing the decision of what I would wear, what suit, what tie. However, one item I knew I'd be wearing today were the Captain America cufflinks given to me by the Chairman of Transportation and honored today's guest, Mr. Speaker. You see, Captain America was a fictional World War II patriotic superhero created by Marvel, Marvel Comics. However, today, I have the distinct honor with my colleagues from Hampton Roads of introducing a real-life World War II patriotic superhero, Colonel Ed Shames. Mr. Speaker, Ed Shames was born in Virginia Beach, Virginia. His parents, David and Sadie Shames, raised four children in an Orthodox household. Ed had a tough childhood. His father passed away at the young age of 42 when Ed was just five years old. Ed has shared that things were tough at that time for Jewish boys. There were times when you had to fight your way through. I was a tough SOB, not mean, just tough. The family pulled together, though, and worked alongside their mother at Shames Provisions in, on Virginia Beach Boulevard. Their challenging years taught Ed to be independent, resourceful, and determined. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor, and only at 19 years of age, Ed went to Fort Monroe in Hampton and volunteered for the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment, a new tactical invention at the time, was a precursor to today's Delta Force. He was sent to Georgia for training, starting as a private in Item Company 3rd Battalion of the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment. The 506th had the toughest training of any regiment in the military. They had 7,000 initial volunteers that had to be whittled down to just 2,500 soldiers. They wanted to discharge Ed after he hurt his knee on his very first parachute jump. But he wouldn't let them, and after walking 149 miles from his training base camp to Fort Benning in full gear over three and a half days, he was determined that he would make it through the training. In England, Ed Shames was promoted to operations sergeant, and he built the sand tables the airborne unit used in planning the airdrop into Normandy on D-Day. Ed's first combat jump was into Normandy that day as part of Operation Overlord. Later in life, he would share that while he was in every battle that was from the time they invaded the continent to the time they went up on top of Eagle's Nest, Hitler's hideout, there was none quite like that jump into Normandy. There was no jubilation, he said. They had a good meal. We had steak and ice cream the first time they had that in years, and I guess you could call it the Last Supper. But when we crossed the continent, all hell broke loose. James quickly proved to be an exceptional leader. Rising through the ranks on June 13, 1944, he received the Battlefield Commission to Second Lieutenant. He was the first NCO in the 3rd Battalion to receive such a commission in Normandy. He was transferred then to Easy Company and took charge of its 3rd Platoon. Ed Shames fought with Easy Company in Operation Market Garden and volunteered for Operation Pegasus. He was wounded once in his left leg during the campaigns, and he fought with the rest of E Company in the Battle of the Bulge. After surviving the bitter cold of the Battle of the Bulge, he endured the shock of being an early liberator of Dachau. Shames also experienced Hitler's mountain retreat known as Eagle's Nest and took a bottle of monogram cognac from Adolf Hitler's private collection back to Virginia Beach. <laughs> which he opened during the celebration of his son's bar mitzvah in 1961. <laughs> After World War II, Colonel Shames served in the Army Reserve where he retired as a colonel. When asked about what he's most proud of regarding his service, Colonel Shames listed two things. First, his battlefield commission. Second, that he brought home more men from his platoon than any other of the 200 platoons in 101st Airborne Division. The rest, he says, is what I was supposed to do and how I was supposed to do it. Since retirement, Colonel Shames has traveled extensively in Israel and the Middle East, serving both his country and his Jewish roots. He's been featured in Ian Gardner's book, Airborne, The Combat Story of Ed Shames of East Company, 
and portrayed in the HBO miniseries Band of Brothers. At the age of 94, Colonel James still proudly travels the country, representing the members of East Company 506th Regiment, his Band of Brothers. And Colonel James and Ida, his beloved wife, just recently celebrated their 70th wedding anniversary. Mr. Speaker, with us today on the House floor, we have Colonel Shames and his wife, Ida, as well as granddaughter, Sarah Errett, and, the ga and in the gallery, we have Colonel Shames' grandson, Dr. Aaron Shames, as well as members of the 101st Airborne, E-4 Specialist, Mr. Joe Nolan, Lieutenant Colonel and Ms. Jim Chamblain, and Captain and Ms. Chuck Payne. And Mr. Speaker, it's been an honor today to join my Hampton Roots colleagues to introduce this American hero on the floor and present Colonel Shames with House Joint Resolution 824. And I'd ask that we give Colonel and Ida Shames and their guests a warm welcome and show our appreciation for their sacrifices to our nation. Yeah. 